And so now what we'll do is we'll show the same process, but this time using a, um, a BAPI to create the sales order. And the way we would typically do this is we would go into transaction BAPI, which reads the business object repository and allows us to actually locate the BAPI or remote enabled function module to create, for example, sales orders. And so if we just scroll down here, you can see that there are a couple of different BAPIs available. An old one from 3.1H, which is now obsolete as of 4.0A. Um, create from DAT1, which is obsolete as of release 4.6C. And then the latest one, which is released with 4.6A, which is create from DAT2. Now, with our... Um, BAPI product or our direct product rather we can go and find that exact same BAPI in fact we can find all of them using a wildcard search in the business object repository and you can see here's the list here and so of course the one we're interested in is this one so we'll just double click on that and we'll bring back some basic metadata um, which uh, which includes documentation which may be useful for working out how to use this so let's go back to SAP let's have a look and see how we would use this so if we click on the tools tab and then click on uh, the function builder option and then click on single test it will launch the function builder uh, test screen and at this stage you can see we have import parameters and we have tables tables um, would be things like uh, order items schedules partners um, and various other attributes that might be associated with a particular order the uh, order header items are as one would expect a single line but with multiple characteristics so for example we could put in the document type the sales organization, the distribution channel, and the, the division. And so this information looks very similar to what we would typically have in a regular sales order. Um, and that would actually be enough uh, order header information. We'd have to, of course, provide partner information. And this we would provide as the ship to and the sold to party. And we could then also put in some sales order lines. So we could put in item 10, which would be PA1000, for example, and a target quantity of 1. And we could add another line. And you can see this is going to be a pretty time consuming um, exercise to test. So, having now done that, we could now click on the check mark and it would come back with a sales order number. Um, it would tells us that the sales header is processed successfully and the two lines have been processed successfully. And here's the order number. Now, this order number will not appear in the SAP system because we have not committed this data to the database. We're simply testing the configuration. And the same would be true within our direct script as well. If we did not check this box, we would not be able to save the data in SAP. And this is important because some BAPIs are actually just read BAPIs. And so we wouldn't want to try and save anything with one of those. So we click on OK now. And what this will do now is it will go into SAP. It will extract all the tables and all the field identifiers. And will download them to our local machine. For us to then consume um, as we require it or according to the, our configuration and then we can uh, import that uh, structure into our transaction product so the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the order header in 
We know, for example, that the document type is going to be something we're going to need, and we want that to be a mandatory field. We know that the sales org is something that we will want, and we want it to be mandatory distribution channel as well, and division as well. We also know that we're interested in partners. So we know that these two fields are the two fields that are most important to us, and that those should be mandatory as well. Okay, and then we have the items. And we know that, for example, we want the item number, we want the material, and we want the target, we want the plant that maybe it would be delivered to, and the target quantity. And actually, all of those could be recommended. They're not actually required fields, um, though it might seem a little strange to not want them. And now, having done that, we're actually done. We can now save this. And having saved that data now, we can launch transaction. And this template will automatically be in there. We can just put that characteristic in here again and just give it an estimate on how long it would take to do this manually. And now you can see the he here's the header information. We can't uncheck any of the mandatories. Here's the partner information, also mandatories. But we could uncheck some of these, but we're actually going to use them all, so we'll leave it at that. And now, having done this, we can simply click on Finish and this will take us to the next stage which is mapping all this data to Excel. Now these are the fields that we've selected and indicated that we want. We could simply auto map these to Excel but we'll notice that if we go to the expert mode the loops have automatically been inserted for us because the system knows that tables have the opportunity for multi-valued characteristics. And now if we launch the Excel workbook, we know, for example, that we're going to provide two partners and we'll provide three lines. So the lines will be 10, 20, and 30. Material PA 1000. Target quantity doesn't get stored where we would expect it to, but for the purposes of this, this will be fine. And the document type is a order or a TA. One thousand ten. Now our script is actually ready to run. So the log will go to column L, set this to zero, set this to L, save it, run it. see here that the sales order number is 28896 and there's our sales order. The order quantity is not reflected here because those are target quantities and they're actually reflected elsewhere in the, in the system.